Number 1. Listen to a teacher talking to students in a science class. In tomorrow's class, we are going to dissect frogs. First, we'll learn how to dissect a frog. Then, we'll learn about the different parts of a frog's body. I know that some of you may be uncomfortable with dissecting a frog, but this is an important part of our science class, so I want you all to be ready to learn. Why is the teacher talking about dissecting frogs? Number 2. Listen to a teacher talking to a class. It's time for us to choose a place to go for next month's field trip. Here are the choices. The Science Museum has an exhibit on space travel. The History Museum has an exhibit on World War II. And the Art Museum has a students' festival. We will go wherever the most students want to go. What will the teacher probably do next? Number 3. Listen to a teacher making an announcement in a class. Let me begin class today with an announcement. As some of you know, I am the teacher in charge of the theater club. The theater club needs people to help make costumes for the spring show. If you've ever dreamed of being a fashion designer, now's your chance. Our next meeting is this Wednesday, so if you're interested, please stop by. What is the teacher mainly talking about? Questions 4 through 7. Listen to a conversation between two friends at school. Do you think Mrs. Cook will check our math homework today? I forgot to do mine last night. She almost always checks our homework. I can only remember a couple of times that she hasn't. Do you think she'll get mad at me for not doing it? I've always done my homework before. This would be the first time I haven't done it. I don't think she'll get mad, but she may be a little disappointed, and she'll definitely take points away from missed homework. Why don't you try doing it during the lunch break? What if she sees me doing it during lunch? Then she would know that I didn't do it last night. I don't even know if there's enough time during lunch to finish it all. She won't see you if you go to the library to do your homework. And if you can't finish it all during lunch, you still have recess time to finish the rest. Math isn't until final period. Maybe you're right. I guess anything is better than showing up empty handed. Now answer the questions. Number 4. What are the students mainly talking about? Number 5. What does the teacher do when students do not do their homework? Number 6. Why is the boy worried about doing his homework during lunch? Number 7. What will the boy probably do during lunch break? Questions 8 through 12. Listen to a teacher talking in a social studies class. Last week we looked at early science from ancient Greece. Today we'll learn about science from the Persian Empire, which once covered much of Iran. During the Middle Ages, the Persian Empire had an important influence on science. In particular, Persian scientists helped to develop the scientific method, a method that is still used by scientists around the world today. Persians may have been the first to use scientific experiments. So, they were very different from the Greeks, whose science was based only on ideas. An early Persian scientist named Al Hazan is probably one of the first scientists to use scientific experiments. Like modern scientists, he used experiments to try to prove his theories. This is called the scientific method. In the scientific method, first you ask a question. Then you try to answer that question by developing a theory. Then you try to prove that your theory is correct through scientific experiments. That's basically how it works. And Al Hazan used this method to prove some important scientific theories, most of them about light. So Persian scientists may well have been the first to use the scientific method. But they went even further than that. 
They also developed a process that let other scientists check the results of their experiments. Today, it is normal for scientists to check the experiments of other scientists. How do they do this? By performing the same experiment to see if they get the same results. Why do they do this? To make sure that the results are correct. Because if the results of the experiment are correct, then the theory is also correct. As I said, this is normal today, but back in the Middle Ages, this was a new and important practice. Now answer the questions. Number 8. What is the teacher mainly discussing? Number 9. What does the teacher imply about ancient Greek scientists? Number 10. Why does the teacher discuss the early Persian scientist al -Hazen. Number 11. In the scientific method, how do scientists prove their theories? Number 12. How do scientists today check the experiments of other scientists?